Why some World War II tanks used aircraft engines? This question came up many times in the past. Why World War II American and British tanks had aircraft engines? So I will try to answer in this video. There were several factors which lead to the use of aircraft engines. Some of those are military based and some came from the civilian life. Let's start with the military factors. First, let's take a quick look at the military doctrines of the time between the two world wars to see how they shaped the tank designs. In the 1920s and 30s, the army still tried to decide how to use the tanks and whether they should belong to the infantry, cavalry or being used as a separate branch. In the United States, Patton and Eisenhower worked on doctrines to use the tank formations as breakthrough force, much like the Germans used them in World War II, but the senior officers opposed these theories and favored the view that the tanks should just support the infantry. Because of this, the US tank corps were disbanded in 1920 and reassigned to the infantry branch. Since the US cavalry was prohibited from developing tanks, they opted for smaller, lighter vehicles under the armored car term. If you're interested in the US military doctrine between the wars in more detail, there's an amazing two-part video on the Chieftains channel. I will put the link in the description. On the British side, the views of the tank force were quite similar, as they opted for separate infantry support tanks and light tanks for reconnaissance and quick attacks. Also, the British between the two world wars designed tanks with their colonies in mind, where even a light tank would be adequate, as there was no real opposition to armored vehicles on the Far East or other British colonies. We can see the main lines of the tank doctrine of the era, so we can move on and see how this affected the actual tank designs. As the main view of the time was separate infantry support and so-called cavalry tanks, the designs followed this principle. On one hand, we have the light and relatively fast cavalry tanks, or cruiser tanks as the British called them, which started in the 5 ton range, like the British Mark VI, and gradually become bigger and heavier, but in general were between 5 and 15 tons. On the other hand, there are the infantry support vehicles, which were more heavily armored, but their speed was not a factor as they only had to keep up with the advancing infantry. Like the British Matilda tank, which was heavily armored, it has a 25 ton weight, but its max speed was 9 miles an hour off-road. Another thing to consider in tank development is that in general between the two world wars the tank development itself was fairly slow, as it is usually in peacetime. And because the doctrine was either heavy but slow tanks or light but faster tanks, the engine design was not very urgent factor as there was no urgent need for more powerful engines. Although tank designs were advanced steadily in between the wars, they were nowhere as near as revolutionary as during World War II when tank design and development went through a giant leap in just a few years. It shows a clear picture of the slow peacetime development if we compare a World War I Renault tank from 1917 to the M1 tankette of the US Army from 1935. We can see development, but no giant leaps, considering there's almost 20 years between them. While if we compare tanks from 1939 and 1945, we can see what a huge change tank design went through in just 6 years. Germany started the war with a tank force mostly made up from Panzer I and II light tanks, weighing 5 and 8 tons, and by the end of the war we arrived to the 68 ton Tiger II. Another factor to look at is that most militaries in peacetime got big budget cuts, and this is especially true to the tank corps as they were relatively new and many senior officers in the armies argued their usefulness. The fairly low resources for tank development made the spendings on a new engine an unjustifiable endeavor. Now we can take a look at the civilian part of events and why aircraft engines were better and more developed. First let's realize what era we are talking about is the roaring 20s and 30s. The world was abuzz with technical innovations, land, sea and airspeed records were set and broken at a fast pace. In the 1920s and 1930s air races were at an all time high and the aircraft engines got better and better because of that. Similar engines were used in speedboat racing and to set land speed records as well. So while the tank and tank engine development was very slow paced, the aircraft engine's development was soaring and brought along many great designs like the Nappy Lion and Sunbeam Aero engines, which powered many of the record-breaking machines. So let's quickly sum it up, what were the reasons behind the lack of tank engine development? The first reason was the tank doctrine itself, looking for either relatively heavy but slow or light and fast tanks, so there was no need for more powerful engines. 
Then the tank development itself was very slow paced at peacetime and the resources were cut back by the government. On the other hand, aero engines were developed and they got much much better during the 1920s and 1930s. So when World War II broke out and it was suddenly realized that they need to change their tank doctrine and as it usually happens at wartime, the tank development jumped to an immense space to outdevelop the other side. In the first years of the war, suddenly the tank's weight jumped from 10-15 tons to 30-40 tons or more and they needed more powerful engines urgently. Now let's take a look what aero engines were used in World War II. In the US, most aircraft at that time used air-cooled radial engines, so they started using those. Actually, when the war broke out, they were already in use in the M2 light and medium tanks. The former using a 7-cylinder, 250 horsepower Continental engine, while the latter used a 9-cylinder, 340 horsepower Wright engine. Later, the same engine with higher output powered the M3 Lee and M4 Sherman tanks. Not all Shermans used the aero engines though, only the original M4 and M4A1 versions. This was mainly due to shortage of radial engine, as production simply couldn't cope with the demand. We can take a quick look of what other engines were used in Sherman tanks. The M4A2 Sherman used two GM diesel engines painted together, which could be used separately if needed. The M4A3 version used the Ford GAA V8 engine, which was a great engine at that time. It was actually a shortened version of the V12 Rolls-Royce Merlin aero engine, which powered the Spitfire and P-51 Mustangs. The British considered using this engine for their tanks as well, but they were looking at the 600 horsepower Metro engine, a derated Merlin engine at that time, and the Ford V8 engine only developed 500 horsepower, so they declined it. The M4A4 Sherman used the Chrysler Multibank engine, which were literally five six-cylinder engines mated together, creating a 30-cylinder monster. As for why the Allies didn't use diesel engines, the answer is they used some, but from a supply viewpoint it was much easier to work with one type of fuel, and since they started the war with petrol engines, it was decided that will be the way to go. Now let's take a look at the British side. The British started World War II with the ancient World War I Liberty engine, which only produced 340 horsepower and wasn't too reliable. They were offered the excellent Napier Lion engines, which had great performance, but those were handcrafted race engines, not suitable for mass production. An upgraded version of the Liberty engine offered 410 horsepower, but that was still deemed too weak and unreliable. Finally, a team at Rolls-Royce started recovering crashed Merlin engines and converting them to tank engines by removing the supercharger and derating them to 600 horsepower. This was the Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, which powered the Cromwell tank, making it a very fast vehicle. If you want to know more of the history of the Meteor engine and the Cromwell tank, I suggest you check out my separate Cromwell video, the link will be in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.